Hey, this is Chris from Prison for Kids, and welcome back to Weird Ass Books. Today, I'm going to be talking about the author Robert Silverberg. He's pretty well known in the new wave of science fiction. He's written a ton of novels. I've only read three, and those are the ones I'm going to talk about today. I first found out about Robert Silverberg because he had a, a quote on this book I got off of Amazon Used called The Man Who Melted by Jack Dan. And Silverberg's quote is, a fierce, unrelenting, enormously powerful view of the future. Maybe I'll talk about this book some other time, but that's how I first heard the name Robert Silverberg. I actually didn't ever know about him, even though he's pretty well known in the new wave of science fiction. The first book I'm going to talk about by him in chronological order is from 1971. It's called Son of Man, and this is very much a product of the psychedelic era. This book, you know, I've already talked about Hot House. This book was kind of like me chasing the dragon of Hot House and finally finding the dragon, because this is a complete phantasmagoric, hallucinatory, what the fuck kind of book that just throws away any idea of traditional plot or traditional setting. Basically, the idea is that this guy, this man from, I think, our time, or the time contemporaneous with when it was written in the 70s, becomes unstuck in time and he gets thrown hundreds of thousands of years in the future, which is, again, whenever I hear something takes place that far in the future, sign me up. So this guy from the contemporaneous Earth encounters and kind of gets thrown through different eras in the future where man has evolved into all sorts of different strange creatures, including these goat men. There's like these Tyrannosaurus type sentient creatures that we become. At one point, there's an intelligence that's literally like a ball of ooze in a metal cage that rolls around. It's so off the wall. If that sounds enticing to you, you need to sign up for this book immediately. I'll read the first paragraph of this and this will, this will set you up. And I, as soon as I read this paragraph, I was like, I'm in. He wakes. Beneath the black earth is cool and moist. He lies on his back in a field of scarlet grass. A soft gust of wind comes by, ruffling the blades, and they melt into a stream of blood. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's not for everybody. I'm probably just going to say that in almost every book I talk about on here. This was the first Robert Silverberg book I read, and I, I absolutely loved it. Not all of it, but for the most part, it took my mind into really interesting directions. And ultimately, it's filled with a lot of very interesting prose. I can't recommend this highly enough for people who really like weird fiction. The next book I'm going to talk about, or the next two, both came out in 1971. Two. 19, they both came out in 1972. The first one I'll talk about just because I didn't like this book actually at all, so I just want to kind of get rid of the second trip. It's sort of like a wannabe Clockwork Orange. I think Clockwork Orange was written before this. I'm almost positive Clockwork Orange came out the book came out in the 60s. But the idea here is that there's this guy, he's an artist, he's a really talented artist, but he's a complete psychopath, and he's a rapist. And he goes to jail, I think for raping his wife, if I remember correctly. It takes place in the future, so he's then reformed, much like Clockwork Orange, how he gets brainwashed into being unable to commit acts of violence. But in this, they create a new personality, a new identity for him, and they try to destroy his old identity, which was the evil artist rapist character. But of course, what happens is that he, that personality, that person doesn't disappear completely. It's just a subconscious entity in this new person's head. And it, actually, that sounds a lot cooler than it really is because the book just doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't really explore too many interesting ideas. It's incredibly dated and it really betrays, unlike Son of Man, because there's only really the one ca human character. Everything else is this totally wildly alien characters with gender fluidity, like there's no real genders anymore in that book. And this one, it really shows how much Robert Silverberg cannot write women and has kind of a contempt for women. So it's really nasty. It's a really nasty book, and it turned me off of Robert Silverberg, Silverberg in a big way. The main thing I think it has going for it is that it's only like 200 pages, so you only have to deal with this nastiness for that long. So this almost put me off of him enough to not read any more books by him, but I'm glad I did because then I read Dying Inside from the same year, 1972, which is considered his like masterpiece. And the concept is great. I mean, this is waiting to be turned into a, into a film. The concept here is that you're, I forget the name of the character now. David Selig is the name of the character. He has had telepathy for his entire life. 
and then in middle age he starts to slowly lose his powers. First of all, the descriptions of him growing up, and he has a little sister who doesn't have the same power, and also just the way he kind of comes of age, realizing that he's unique and that he has this ability to read people's minds, is really well done, really realistic in my mind. And what's truly heartbreaking about this book is that it's sort of a metaphor for losing your creativity in your middle age. I think he's in his 40s, and it kind of seems like this is a stand-in for Silverberg himself in some ways, that he felt he was losing his creativity, sort of like his power what made him be able to write 30 books in five years, basically, was starting to wane. It's just a great meditation on becoming an older man. It's about creativity, but also, you know, it uses a science fiction device to move the, the narrative forward. Once again, I would say, like the second trip, the female characters are not fleshed out, but I will say, I do think this is his masterpiece, and for those of you who might think Son of Man is a little too weird for you, you don't want to, like, spend time with weird aliens rolling around in futuristic cages and T-Rexes that can speak and goat men, this is a really grounded science fiction work, and I think it could be an incredible adaptation to a film if you just changed the time period, maybe, but just went with the concept that here's a guy who had a telepathy his whole life and took advantage of people his whole life, used it to his advantage, but still he didn't really become successful, even though he had this extraordinary power, and now he's starting to lose it. So I think Robert Silverberg is still alive. He has a lot of great ideas. He's prolific, and I'm sure a lot of people will get a lot of good juice from what he's doing. So yeah, Robert Silverberg. Yeah.